I'm Pim K. Masenki, editor of City Life, and I'm here with my favorite uh, dog, <laughs> Tiggy, and my dear friend Lana Cummings. There you go. So, if you don't know Lana, which gasp, horror, shock, why wouldn't you? But she is this amazing diva, singer, wonderful, very famous. You would have heard her music if you've been anywhere in Thailand for any length of time. It's, it, it just rolls <laughs> off. Yeah, it's everywhere in every karaoke, right? So Lana is a singer, um, also a restaurateur um, and a girl about town. So we're going to talk about you and we've, we've been friends now for a while. Um, interestingly enough, we first met when she was 16 and I was 26 and it was one of my first interviews. I was interviewing her mum. Her mum is this very famous Northern Thai folk singer um, that my dad had a crush on about 50 years ago. <laughs> don't worry, I didn't go anywhere. I don't, I don't think <laughs> we're not related. No, no. <laughs> and, uh, no. But, um, and Lana basically became a singer when she was 18. But when I interviewed you, you weren't even... Not no, even thinking no, about it. Yeah. About it. But that's how we first met. Right. Um, and then... Over the years, you dated a couple of my friends, yes. and then we became friends, yes. and then we became really close friends during the COVID lockdown. Yes. We ended up living together for a while, didn't we? Yes, oh, that we was did. so nice. Blessing in disguise. Oh, yeah. It was lovely. Yeah. So, yeah, Lana, tell us a little bit about yourself, um, your background. Well, my dad's Australian, my mom's Northern Thai, and... Uh, well, we, we moved around a bit uh, before. We lived in Malaysia. We lived in Malaysia before oh, and, uh, because my dad was working uh, for the Australian Embassy there. Oh, no. And uh, after a while, we moved back to Bangkok. You were born in Bangkok? Uh, I was born in Bangkok and then uh, we moved straight away to Malaysia and then Canberra and then back to Bangkok. Right. Yeah, and, then, and then mom just mom and dad split and mom took brought us up to Chiang Mai and dad stayed in Bangkok. So mom was already famous when they met. Yeah, when, when, she, when, when we returned back to Thailand, she actually uh, landed and was greeted by a crowd of uh, reporters and she was just like, whoa. Oh, so she didn't know she was that famous? No. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Absentia. Exactly. Oh, interesting. And so she was, she was, whoa. And then suddenly she had to go uh, on tour, like, had concerts going on and I was tagging along, uh, playing music videos for her with my brother oh, and really? yeah, and oh. on concert with her, yeah. Her mom's um, iconic song is called Katao Ben Sao Chiang Mai, which means I am a northern lass, a Chiang Mai lass. <laughs> and it's beautiful, it's haunting, isn't it? But we're not talking about mom today, we're talking about <laughs> you. <laughs> so how how did I mean did you always sing was it something you enjoyed or I mean you went to international school here so oh, I yes yes I, I uh, so when we moved to, to Chiang Mai uh, we went to CMIS my brother and I enrolled in CMIS immediately and we graduated from CMIS yeah and then my brother went to Australia to continue his studies while I well I stayed because I was few, I'm like two years younger than him yeah. so I after I graduated, uh, I had an offer from, from a music label. Why? Had they heard you sing? Or was it just because you're your mom's daughter? Were you pretty? What was it? <laughs> well, uh, before that, uh, before I got the offer, I was, well, before that, my, my hobby was, was I was riding, riding horses. I, I used to, to do equestrian, like show, show jumping and cross country stuff. Dressage. <laughs> and, then, um, and then after uh, I had to stop because of the Tom Yam Kung financial crisis. 97, yeah. uh, and then I had to sell my horse. <gasps> oh. And so I, I just couldn't continue. I was just like, you know, I, I can't do this anymore without my horse. But your mom was famous. Couldn't she feed your horse? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I think I think, uh, and I, I was also going through my own sort of a crisis in terms of uh, you know writing and as, as well, and so I just I decided to stop uh, to quit writing, and so I had to find something else to do, uh, and I'm like, oh, might as well tr try to learn dancing and all that, you know, whatever, just to get me moving after school. And they had a musical. Uh, it was a, it was um, with a Chan Tian Chai Su Tian. A Chan Tian Chai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they, they were doing the musical concert for four and one. 
Yes, yeah. Yes. And I and they asked me to play the role of the Vita, which was like my dream yeah. role. I, mean, I was like, of course, even though I wasn't really doing a lot of their classes yet. I wasn't that advanced. I was just like, but, but had you had voice lessons up to that point? I had a few voice lessons with Krute, but then I didn't think I was good enough. But I mean, I'm, no matter what they wanted me to play the role for, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'll take it, you know? Yeah. And so uh, that was the first time being on a big stage at Gat Theater, and uh, I really enjoyed it. I, I liked the, the feeling of the power, you know, in so your right hand. I loved it, yeah. <laughs> I loved yeah, it. You always hear about people like you who like that. And I don't at all. I don't, I, 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 I'm shy. <laughs> right. So yeah. you, you were hooked. I, I liked it. Yeah. I, I really liked it. I liked that, that, that it was all up to me. Right. To, to, to which way, how I was going to make the audience feel, which way I was going to take them. It was all up to me. Mistress yeah. manipulator. <laughs> Excellent. So yeah. you got hooked. And, and then, then after, afterwards, I mean, I, I would sing at the restaurant from time to time, whenever I felt like it. Yeah. Mum has a restaurant on the river. Yeah. Um, Sun Tari, serving yes. delightful northern Thai food. And if you're lucky, which you normally are, Mum or Lana will come out and sing. Yes. And, and so that was what I was doing, uh, like occasionally. And then Lung Taran passed away. Lung Taran passed away. And, I don't know Lung Taran. Uh, Lung Taran, I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. Lung Taran Manopet is, is the legendary um, Northern Thai uh, song writer, producer, artist, I would say. Uh, he passed away when he was around, I think, 50, 51 mm -hmm. only. And he was like the head of my mom's band. So, so she was singing. It was, it was always her and him like, singing together with, with his brothers, with the, with the Manopet you know, uh, band, and, uh, and then he passed away, and so th all the media was focused on mom. And they were like interviewing her, but mm -hmm. everyone was focused on her. And suddenly uh, someone heard that, oh, she has a daughter that actually sings. And so they expected me to be singing uh, some sort of like Luktung, which is folk. Is, like folk, Isan, like, like style, but then uh, they came to the restaurant and they heard me singing Hotel California. <laughs> I was singing English songs. And they're like, oh, she's not like Duk Tung. Yeah, oh, not one horse mm. pony. That's the word. <laughs> oh. One trick horse pony. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can do more than one thing. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, he asked if I was interested in taking uh, some videos and uh, interviewing them, uh, interviewing with them. And I said, sure, why not? What do you want to know? And then yeah. so they, they took whatever they, they, they got and they back to the label. And, and you were 18 were, then? I was 17, yeah. And, and we didn't hear from them for a long time until they said that they were interested. Would you want to come to sign a contract with us in Bangkok? And I'm like, okay, like maybe this is something that I can do to uh, maybe earn some kind of money to pay for my own way to university. So mom- And life yeah. just changed, didn't it? My God, tell us about that. Tell us about going to Bangkok and joining Grammy, right? Yeah, with, with, with signing the contract and talking to the, the CEO about what, what kind of image or character, or, or, who, or basically who I, who, who I thought I was and what my mother sort of thought I was was not as mind-blowing as when the entire uh, songwriting team, the entire producing team uh, came up to Chiang Mai see us. Um, I, was, I, was, I was already ready to go, to move on, because I said that within two years, if nothing changes, I'm, I'm off, because I well, can't what, wait. What did they want from you that, that wasn't happening? Uh, they they were trying to find a song like a, a producing a song song producing team right. because I didn't fall into any genre that they had. Right. I wasn't pop. I wasn't look tung. I wasn't rock. I, they, they, Western. I like they didn't know I, I have a genre. Just child. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and so they they asked like different producers, but then it wasn't the right the right concept. Yeah. Yet, until they they finally found this team. And then they're like, ah, oh, 
she doesn't have to come to Bangkok. We want to go to see her because they want they want to come to Chiang Mai. And so as soon as this, this entire team came up, which is currently now Wong Nang Len. Oh, okay. Yeah, the entire band Wong Nang Len is the entire team oh. behind behind you all of my stuff. Uh, they came, so it's like a huge group. Uh, I was really overwhelmed. I was like, okay, I guess it's for real. Yeah. Now. And so yeah, we do. started recording. So how did they find who you are? How did you get, how how do you shape that? There's a lot of you know. Uh, they, they took a lot of like videos. I had to do a lot of screen tests. I had to do a lot of stuff while I was in Bangkok right. for them to see different sides of me, my character. Um, Seventeen. I mean, who yeah. has my I had, character? <laughs> I had no idea what I was or what right. was what looked good or anything. I, I went. To, I went there with a ponytail because I, I was playing a prank That's on my friend. Uh, my friend, uh, be before he left New Zealand, I had really short hair. So when he came back, I, I went to go pick him up with long hair. I wanted to surprise him. Then mom said, oh, it looks good. I'm like, oh, okay, I guess it works. You know? So Tick got the hair done. Yeah. And how did you, I mean, the songs, how did they come about? Uh, it's, 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 just a mi it's just a blend of like who I am. I'm, I'm not Farang. I'm not Northern Thai, Northern Thai. I'm a blend of both. I'm Western uh, and I'm also Northern Thai. I mean, her name yeah. is Lana, for God's sake, right? Yeah. I mean, you don't get more Northern Thai than that. Um, yeah. And your songs have English, Thai and Northern Thai. Yeah. They're, they're completely trilingual. And right? then it's an easy background. Oh, it's an easy story to sell because of my, my, my background with my mother and, yeah. and her connection with Lung Zaran and everything. So right. it's... it's so what Package, happened then? Yeah. So you went into production and, and, and mm -hmm. were people talking about it or was this all like hush hush and no one knew? In the beginning it was hush hush for maybe about six months and then suddenly they, they started sending out singles to uh, radio stations and I actually got received like uh, CDs uh, of my first singles yeah. that I still keep. Good. Uh, that um, I got so excited about. Of course. But, but the first time I heard my own demo I cried completely. Because oh. I, I hated the way I what? sounded. Oh, for God's sake. Because back in the days, we didn't have mo mobile phones like to record yeah, ourselves, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we had to sing, you know, the, the cassette recorders. I mean, I, I never recorded like uh, anything before. So hearing myself actually really hear myself, hear my voice for the first time, I thought I sounded horrible. It wasn't anything like what I, what I expected. Oh, really? Oh no! Like I had a completely different sound in my mind, you know. I'm like, <laughs> what did you think? <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, you're so funny or something. <laughs> you're, you're, you're very husky. You got a bit of a sexy little husk going on. Yeah. Yeah. But so, okay, let's rewind a little bit. I mean, <laughs> when you were at school, I mean, were you were you going to head towards the academic track ever? Did you have any idea which direction where you were going? Did you fit in? How are you when you're at school? I was. I was always like a, a sort of a problem child. I mean, yeah, yeah. Tell me that I never. Why? I mean, I never really felt that I fit in anywhere. Why? Because uh, I didn't. I had no, no, no one that I could really relate to. A lot of. Uh, I mean, or maybe I, it was in my head. I don't know. I was a very, very confused uh, teenager, uh, and I was very alone. I felt very alone. Oh, honey, I'm so yeah. sorry. <laughs> I mean, it happens. I mean. To, to 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 all of us, you know. I mean, no, uh, I was, I was, <laughs> I was, no, I can't. Yeah. I was always with people, but so when you carried that through, when you went to Bangkok, and suddenly you had this whole gaggle of Grammy people grooming you and creating the new you for p public consumption. How did you cope with that if you didn't have sort of um, if you were still lost, if you still weren't sure who you were? Yeah, it, it was uh, overwhelming. But but the 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 one thing that mm. that I Actually, the thing that I clung to was the fact that uh, the, the, the songwriting team, Atun, uh, and, and all these great people, warm people, they, they decided to, to, to work with me, to create something with me, uh, because they had faith in me. Yeah. I don't know what they had faith in, well, it's paid but off. it was like something that they saw in me that that they thought it would work. So I, that's what I clung on to. And so what happened uh, then when, 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 when you launched? <laughs> <laughs> Snoring. Well, everything was like on like, fast forward. It, it, was, it was like 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> You're really snoring. <laughs> Everything just went so fast that some things I remember, a lot of things I didn't I don't remember because it was just so fast. I wish I could go backwards and like just put everything in slow motion because I want to keep every single moment because uh it a lot of it was really just magnificent. Like what kind of some like, some moments? Like the the first time that I I met my my fans like you know, uh, I had my first fan meeting, like all these people, like literally strangers fr from nowhere, having faith in me, loving what I do without any question, protect me from, from critics. Uh, they're, they're like, I'm like, I slowly started to believe in what I was doing as well through these people. And uh, I just don't want to disappoint them. So, yeah. yeah, but there must have been moments of, of, of also, wow, I mean, great experiences. Like, yeah. what, what are some of the cool things that you got out of this experience? Like, I, I got to travel a lot. Yeah. All over. Your, yeah, tell like, us All over. Like, I, I traveled, like, I think I've, I've covered all of Thailand, uh, actually, already. Even though cover me, doesn't mean that I've actually, you know, tourists, like, you know, sightseeing anywhere. I, I just go somewhere I sing and I just keep on moving yeah, but I've actually insight into Thailand yeah and uh, and I've, I've traveled abroad to sing I've, I've got to meet Thai people working abroad I've got to share experiences with them get to know what their life's about I mean I love learning about other people's lives yeah and what what they're doing you did your grand tour of America yeah you did, you've done some really in Korea in South Korea in Japan Many places, yeah. and that was really cool. I got to know really cool people from that. And that one day, I would become someone that, like, when you're a kid, whenever you feel down, you want to listen. You listen to to like a specific person or specific song that will always bring you up. I became that to other people. Yeah, and I just couldn't believe it. Yeah, wow, like. It, 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 it's that's re that's the most spe like special feeling ever that that I cannot thank thank or be grateful yeah. enough. It's pretty for. Uh, meaningful, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So um, with fame, I mean, you know, we've talked about this, hasn't yeah. it? And you were young, you were vulnerable, you were pretty much alone in Bangkok. Oh, it was so lonely. And you must have had some nasty predators and sharks and unpleasantness as well. Yeah, the, I mean, if, if I could rewind and, and redo things, I think I, I would redo that part about like being with, with people that uh, I would have filtered them. But actually, at that age, I had no filter. Exactly. I didn't know what right from wrong. I didn't know who was a predator or not. So there were a few things that I would have re redone, but the best advice I could give anyone if their child or if they're thinking about going into the business yeah. <clears throat> is your best investment would be hire a financial advisor. Did you screw up? Uh, it's not, I, would, I wouldn't say screw up, but I went into the business without any plan. Uh, and, and you did well. You did so like, well. Most people go in with a plan. Like yeah. they, they, they had to go through so much to achieve. But I, I didn't. I didn't. You just launched straight into stardom, didn't like, you? I, I didn't yeah. have to go through all the hardships yeah. or, you know. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I was lucky. Yeah. I mean, I had, I had a background yeah. that made it easy. Yeah. And that's why I didn't have a plan, because I didn't plan to becoming a singer. No. So what happened then? I mean, what are the pitfalls that you can warn people of? Well... I mean, I would say everyone in the entertainment business, I mean, there are great people. I mean, it is a great, I mean, a great, everyone's so, everything's so organized. I mean, especially if, if you're working with a, such a huge label or with a huge team, there are like many teams doing things. It's, it's, just, like, it's just really, really professional. But at the same time, you have to have your own support, you know, you have to have your own group of people to support yeah. you that aren't, because sometimes, sometimes people are around you for, you don't know what reason, you don't know what they're after. So yeah. you mentioned about how um, 
you got your sort of almost self-worth by the, the value that people and faith they had in you. Yeah. And, and how the fans were, were defending you against criticism, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But as tends to be the fickle nature of humans, fans can turn, people can Yes. Turn. And so tell us about, about some of that when, you know, so you, you put out three albums. Uh, four. Uh, four. Yeah, one, with one, one independently uh, so afterwards. So tell us about the journey and, and where it got and how the challenges began to come. Well, uh, after the first album was released and it was a big hit, I was touring nonstop. Uh, my my vocal cords were fried Ooh. completely. Uh, I had to go to like I had to get hospitalized. I had to go like vocal coach. Oh. I had to redo everything because because they were just not working. I I couldn't sing. I, I could barely could speak. But then I had to record the second album. And I'm like, are you kidding? Like it's like it's in the contract. I'm like. I don't have a voice, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah so I was, uh, the second album was really difficult because it was very, like, emotional for me because I was homesick. Uh, even though, what it was home, you know? Uh, I, I wanted to come home, but to what? I, I, didn't, have, I didn't have, like, I yeah. You didn't have your friendship circle in Chiang Mai because you left no. you so young yes. and your international friend so exactly friend. Andrew your brother had left mother had her finger Ma mom had to restaurant money no I didn't yeah so I was uh very lonely okay yeah and so I just had to just uh, continue working and so a lot of the songs were for my dog <laughs> because my dog was staying in Chiang Mai and so I missed my dog very much uh, she was the light of my life at the time and uh, yeah so uh, that was it it was just work 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 and and so I, I barely came back home because I there wasn't much to come back home to so you never really I mean had roots in Chiang Mai as much apart from your family and your yes. mom's businesses and everything so that came much later didn't it? oh yeah much much later so what else I mean what 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 did you do in Bangkok I mean tell us about the high life of a pop diva in Bangkok oh I I, I did I, I barely went out really? I I had oh, no so friends you took cane off the nope. of models and not not then no <laughs> <laughs> not at that time no <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I, I was, my, my, my body was even in shock to the point where I was getting, I, I woke up to go uh, shoot a music video at four uh, and I just, I fainted in the elevator. I just, because I was just so exhausted and uh, yeah, well, it, it was, years, right? yeah, it went on for, I had, I, it was one, al one album after the other because it was in a contract and uh, so I was no longer inspired to do anything because everything was, was sucked out and put to use as yeah, it should, yeah, should yeah, have yeah. been. But then I had, it, it completely drained me. So when it was time to renew the contract, I was like, nah. So, I mean, because you, I mean, you must have had some men coming after you in those days. Were they like hot politicians and famous people and gazillionaires? Did you have all that swarming around? <laughs> I was very like I, I didn't go out. You see, I didn't go out at night at all. Where were you? <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't go because I was I was I became quite paranoid. Uh, yeah, claustro like like phobia of like crowded places. And yeah, you didn't know who you could trust, right? Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit. <laughs> because after I I finished the concert backstage, the guards weren't doing their job. And people after a concert, they're usually quite, you know, and so they're grabbing at any, anything that they could. One person grabbed my hair, another person grabbed my tit, you know. It was like, I was really, I was really afraid. And, uh, but nothing happened. But then that really got me really scared. What if I went outside alone somewhere in Bangkok and that happened to me? And like, what would I do? You know, I became scared. So... Even to Seven Eleven, I would I would think about it over and over and over again before I went because I would, I just came so paranoid. That's affected you long term, I think. Yeah, it's only been recently that you've been able to I feel like open up a lot more and because when when everyone's after a piece of you, how could you 
trust yourself, right? Like everything, everything that everything was was under uh, everything was was overly criticized by everyone. Everyone. And back then, we didn't even have the internet, like media. You know, we didn't even have the the, the internet yet, like this, like yeah. this. And Can you imagine. And so it was always like on the front page of the newspaper about my mother and how the, um, how I would relate to my mother. It was just, it was it was nasty. And so uh, yeah, I I was very uh, I, yeah I felt yeah. I felt very uh, vulnerable you know after that. And and you know we went to Bangkok. Um, well, I was in Bangkok three years ago with my friend, our friend Jonas, and we were walking around Chinatown, and we went to the bar, this bar, and they were playing her song, and so we we're like, oh my god, oh my god, we should call Lana. <laughs> so we we called Lana, and she was like, you you won't believe it, I'm next to yeah. the next bar. <laughs> so we walked that time, yeah. and um, and people were coming up to her. I mean, you know, strangers were coming up asking for selfies, pictures. So, you know, all these years later. They're still wanting a little piece of you, I mean, which is which is lovely. It I mean, I mean, I, I just tell myself that at least they're not coming in to like you know be violent. No. Then you said they began to turn on you. You got a bit older. The criticism started coming. You gained a bit of weight. You yeah, stressed. Um, tell us about oh, the yeah. Uh, it's taken me such a long time to get over the criticism. Uh, I don't. I'm not on social media much. I mean, I have like the Facebook. I have the. I have the 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 channels and stuff. But I I don't respond because I just don't bother reading the comments. I understand some of the comments are great. They're encouraging. They're supportive. But but the ones that aren't, I don't want. I don't want to even like see them. It 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 can trigger some really bad feelings. I don't want that to happen. So I just. I don't bother. Uh, we'll talk about that briefly. I mean, uh, you, you went on to national television last year. Right. And my mom actually called me down to watch it. I didn't even know you were on. And you shared some very personal right. um, stories. So you got to the point. Sh share with our readers. Uh, well, uh, I, I realized that I've actually been undiagnosed with like a personality disorder ever since I was a kid. Ever since I was, you know, 16, 15, 16, I've always had trouble uh, with uh, expressing my emotions. I've always su suppressed them. Yes. And so uh, whenever I, I would feel something, it would be just such a huge wave of emotion that I didn't know how to handle it. And so the only way that I could shut it out was by uh, being violent with myself, by being, you know, physically abusive to myself. And then all that would just shut up. Everything would just be quiet after that. And so it wasn't about like uh, trying to take my life, but it was just about just trying to, to shut up the voices yeah. in my head. And, uh, but, but then it, it, it also reached a point where it, it just got too much that, that uh, I, I never wanted to end my life, but it just became too abusive. It yeah. was terrifying. You yeah. did rather extreme measures a few times. Yeah. You cut yourself, right? Yeah. And end up in hospital. That's not going to happen again. Yeah, because because thankfully, I mean, uh, uh, from great friends, <laughs> I've I've learned uh, the, my own value, my, uh, that there's nothing wrong with who I am. Uh, nothing has to be filtered with my friends and and. And it's okay. Yeah. So yeah. it took you quite a few years, didn't it, to 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 deal with these? And at the Ooh. same time, you were having um, the rela serious relationships. Yeah. Very serious, heavy relationships, um, which I felt you got lost in sometimes. Oh yeah, it, it was a pattern. Yeah. It's a pattern with me. I've I've always wanted to please. You know, also when when I'm in a relationship, it would always be about them. I would always, you know, change to please them because that's what, what I thought it's supposed to be. I didn't know. I didn't know what it was to have your own, to be your own person in a relationship. Uh, I always thought it would had I had to compromise myself. It, it took a long time for me to slow slowly like unravel ugly parts that that have been you know just put away for so long because during my teenage years I had to put all of that away when I was singing so you didn't have time to basically 
mature nothing at all on your own terms you know you nothing at all into troubled teens into stardom yep. that's pretty uh, yep yeah and whole <laughs> process right and so i was doing things for all the wrong reasons and uh everything just just all my my problems uh just were just slowly put aside and so Sooner or later, they're, they're going to come out and, and bite me in the butt, you know. <laughs> when did you leave Bangkok, leave the industry? When did it all change? It all changed. Oh, when did it all change? Meaning, like, coming back to live yeah. here? Yeah, when did you sort of decide to put the end of that chapter? Well, <laughs> well uh, I decided to end that chapter not because... Um, well, I was trying to get out of a relationship at the moment, at that time, and uh, the only way out was to, to, to flee. Oh. I mean, it, there was no, no, no way of getting out nicely. I mean, it was, it was not a nice breakup, and so I, I was threatened, and it was, it was really horrible. So the only safe way back was to come back here. When was uh, that? That was in. Oh, I don't remember what what year. About Ten years ago. Well, when I was like twenty-three, twenty-four. Yeah. 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 Wow. wow. So you came back. Wow, pretty young, right? Yeah. What, what did you do? And then I jumped into another relationship. Ah. Yeah. And so I was back in Bangkok again. That was a musician. Yeah. And and it was it was my life had its ups and downs from the relationships that I was in. That's the thing. The relationships shaped you. Your career yep. shapes you. You didn't get to shape you. No, I didn't know how. Well, that's what you're doing. It was like now, everything right? that I uh, that I felt that I was doing in the past was wrong. Nothing was was acceptable. I mean, I, I mean, when I was singing, of course, but on stage, of course, because all of that was already filtered. All of that was already sculpted, mm. perfection by. Are the different teams, uh, my speech, the speeches I gave, everything that I said was filtered, e like everything was, was perfectly sculpted by them, which you know, good on them. And they, I think that they did a great job, and and uh, I believed it. But you lost your own voice. I believed. It. I I thought because that's what is okay with everyone. That's probably who I was. But no. So much noise, didn't you? And I had no no one to sit me down and say, "Hey, how are you?" Or just, you know, just be there. I had no one that was genuinely there for me, you know, on my own team. None. Cuz it's hard to trust when there's so much interest involved, right? Someone's going to make money off this, someone's going to take advantage of that. Yeah. <sighs> it must be so hard. So, okay, so you move back here and then what? And then I, I tried to redis or, or tried to rediscover myself, but I had no idea how to do that. You know, so I was I was doing gigs. And I was I had gigs here and there. Um, I was going out a lot more, drinking, like just going out. Yeah, we were. Like, <laughs> and uh, helping out with the restaurant bits and bobs until Andrew came back. Yeah, and then he sorted my say that you know <laughs> he sorted my ass out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did. He whooped me into shape. Yeah, because uh, that's what he made a, a promise. He made a promise before he left. Yeah. Oh, what what promise? Uh, like that that he wouldn't t desert me. Good big brother. He just got married as well. Just I know. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to have to talk about the thing that we both have to deal with. Uh huh. You got a lot of shit for your weight. Uh huh. Right. So let's talk about that. You know, we we both are slightly, just a smidge overweight, um, and we get a lot. I mean, it hurts, right? I mean, and you got that in the media quite a lot. And, and yeah. How do you cope with all that? Well, uh, in the beginning, it was it was. Oh, I, my confidence was gone. I mean, I lost all confidence. I didn't even l like looking in at myself in front of the cameras. I, I never watched back on anything that I taped because I, I just hated the way I looked. Um, what happened? What, was it like late 20s? Or? Uh, yeah, late 20s, uh, early 30s. Uh, pretty miserable by then. Oh, I, I was, yeah, I was... In, in in every way, I would say miserable, uh, and I was 
so scared about of, about of everything at that time and and that didn't have enough confidence to even like leave the house and make new friends and meet new people because I just thought that you know wh why would anyone want to deal with me you know like so what what do you think of the Thai media I mean you know was it well how did it treat you they they I mean of course they weren't nice but then I had, I, I'm, I was ignorant so <laughs> I don't read a lot of stuff even I mean. I, People would come and tell me from time to time, or my customers would come up and say, "You're not so fat in person," you know. Oh, yeah, I, get, I, I get that. No. I'm like, "Oh, thanks," you know. <laughs> or like, or some of them, "Why are you so fat now?" I'm like, uh, "I'm like, oh, why are you so old now?" Yeah. You know. I just be a bit snarky back, you know, and then I get it off my chest. But before, I just kept it in, and and I would just it would. I would hurt myself with it, you know, and... Uh, can we say to the public, please, you know, I have I have a mirror, I can see. <laughs> I don't need to be told every time someone sees me that I'm overweight. I but, know it. But then I also learned that maybe it's a culture dif cultural difference because uh, Thais might just greet each other with like, Oh, why are you looking so... Why have you gained so much weight? Yeah, it's normal to them. Yeah. But then uh, in like Western culture, it's really offensive to be like, Oh, you've got so much more gray or whatever. Or, like, you know, or just, just greeting them about their physical appearance. But it it's, hurts. It's, it's not but nice. It hurts. You know? it, it hurts. It's a cultural excuse to use. If you're hurting someone else, cut it out. Cut out that. Right. Thing. You know, I don't care about your culture. If you're but, someone. but before, ties were... A, a lot less um, aware. Yeah, I think yeah. I think changing. now it's it's changing and and people have become a lot less uh, rude. Yeah, and e <laughs> even the media they they've learned that hey this is uh a, it's it's a very it's abusive it's bullying and it's just not cool. You know, like, like you I've noticed a big yeah. in entire media attitude and general attitudes. Yeah. So that's education. Yeah. That's to other other norms and thoughts. On to happier matters. Uh huh. So one thing I'm going to say that you don't know about Lana is that um, this woman in the back of the boot of her car, she has like <laughs> a hard hat with a light and she wears a chainsaw and hammers and stuff. Like <laughs> your complete home improvement tools lady it's the weirdest thing like i was having my living room painted last year and she just pops up for like three days and paints my walls for me like what's up with that see that's, so that's what happens when 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 i come back home i i when i came back home not apart from singing i always do stuff on the side i always trying to learn new things i go to different um i, I take courses to learn like just different things that will be useful. Maybe I would like it, you know. Like she's uh, a plumber, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Your toilet needs training. <laughs> uh, I mean, stuff that needs to be done around the house that yeah. require that would usually require a man's, uh, you know, help. You know. You don't need that. No. Because I don't want to go running just just to a guy be like, oh, can you do this for me? Can you do this for me? It's just no. I mean, I want something done. I'll learn how to do it. Is this a new you know, thing? was this you've always? I've always done that. Yeah, like I, I have. Uh, usually after the rainy season, my brother and I would help uh, prepare the riverside. So we would have to uh, redo the tables. Oh. A lot of stuff was wood, uh, so. I took wood courses, wood 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 work, yeah, car, yeah, woodwork to to get to know um, about it in more detail, and so that I, I, not I'm not just like DIY. I'm actually I do know what I'm doing and stuff like that with with, with things. So and it's interesting, and maybe I I'll learn something new if I don't like it that I just won't even remember it, and if I like it, I uh, end up with more skill in doing things, yeah. She's full of surprises, this one. So tell us about your life now. Mm. Where are you at now, after coming through this remarkable journey that's pretty, well, completely unique to you? I mean, you know, what's the last few years been like? Well, it's been really uh, therapeutic, I would say. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm off medication. Uh, hmm. I'm my triggers aren't so uh, extreme anymore. Whenever I have like a bad trigger, it doesn't take me in pla to places where I have been before. Uh, and I mean, I'm, I'm getting to know myself a lot more and- But you're working hard. 
Right. Oh God, my geez. gosh. I can't even get her out. Kitchen. Half the time. Yeah. Tell us what, what you're doing. Well, I've, I've been working at the, at, uh, I've been a kitchen boy, you know. <laughs> She's got like little chefs out there and just like stuffing fish. <laughs> yeah, I mean, since COVID, uh, as most of you know, um, the, in, in the service industry has been affected. Uh, a lot of, you know, the staff that we had went back home, did their own thing and decided, hey, we like being our own boss. We're not going to go back. And we're like, oh. And so we lost a lot of uh, our staff. How many seat restaurant? 360 Three. seats. 360 yeah. seats during the pandemic. Oh, you poor dear. And so we had to, like, you know, scale everything down, which is great. So, so now, more, now, now it's a lot more cost efficient. Yeah. The menu, everything is, is, is just, it makes more sense. But the zones, like the seating has also yeah. been askew, which is great, you know. Pretty much all of us. She's been in there, in the kitchen, <laughs> cooking. She does all the shopping. She does the accountant. She does the management. She hires the staff. She cleans the tables. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't know how you do it. I really don't. But you just said to me earlier that you've just got a manager now. So you're able to step back a little bit. Oh, oh that, that manager is like my manager, not, not the restaurant's manager. Oh. <laughs> Oh, what does that mean? Uh, my manager, the one that that uh, tours with me, goes, yeah, oh, so, oh, yeah. So but but she she also is a very close uh, friend of the family. So so she P P P O. So so she she I can actually get through to mom in difficult times. There are two <laughs> divas in that house. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> Right. Yeah, you need a, you, it's, it's very important to have a, you know, a good negotiator. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, so, um, yeah. so you basically have been therapeutic, you said, you know, and, and I've noticed it. I, I, I feel like you, you've really come to your own the last couple I'm writing a lot, I'm writing a lot more now. Songs? Songs, yeah. Yeah, and, and I have. But they're all in English. I know. Yeah. Actually, I love, she's just written this new song, which, I mean, I could sing. I won't. I could. <laughs> 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 but it's so beautiful. When, are we, when can we listen to it? Can I put it on here? Like, it, it, Maybe. It, it, I think it's Maybe. funny. <laughs> so all her friends think is about her, about them too. Uh, yeah. when, when the darkness finds you anywhere i'll be there it's so beautiful you can <laughs> do it. i won't I, I promise i wouldn't sing and i did anyway and that was really <laughs> sorry well yeah you're gonna do a better version but, um, so what about the future what are your plans now now that you know who you are okay you, you, you you've got your own style you've got your own character you've got your own friends you have your own voice you know and you're beginning to write again where do you want to take this new spanking new lana well actually uh well, i have a concert coming up soon but then after that i mean now because covid took a, a strain on everyone uh like financially and so which if, if you're financially like drained, you have to find more, right? So how are you going to do that? I mean, you have to work more. So I, when, when I have to work more, it leaves less time for songwriting and, and doing what I love to do. So the, the plan is to, to work, just work, uh, earn the money back and, yes. and then, you know, uh, hopefully organize it like, you know, in good balance that I can work and also travel and write music at the same time. Yeah. This is achievable. You, you oh yeah. Yeah. See a direction. Yeah. You know, you're very hardworking and, and you're quite systematic. You're very, so I, I fully believe you'll get there. So what about all these cool new songs? Are we going to launch an album? When can, when can our viewers? Well, uh, the plan is, uh, it should the first single should be released uh, within two months from now. Yeah. Aww, yeah. But so? yeah, but I mean independently. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Can you just do the chorus for us, can you? <laughs> Go on. When the darkness finds you anywhere, I'll be there. Ooh, when the 
darkness find you don't be scared cuz i'll be there yeah, something like that. Okay, hi, Eon. <laughs> very exciting. What you excited, Tiggy? That was brilliant. I'm actually a, a very shy person. <laughs> and I'm so much. Like two peas in a little tiny pod. <laughs> so like shy. <laughs> That's really, really, really exciting. So you also talked about possibly moving to Australia. Are these all just like little dreams at this point? Or are you unsure? Or do you have a, a firm plan about that? Well, I think the hardest part about it all is change, right? Change never comes easy. Uh, for me, especially at a time where I'm starting to, you know, feel my place, change has, it's, it's something that's, uh, it's inevitable. I mean, it has to happen, or else yeah. I can't just stay here and it just it just wouldn't work. the The dream life that I, that I want wouldn't work. I think you need you need. Yeah. I think you're ready for a change. And I mean, change ready? is good for people. I mean, yeah. it keeps you on, on on your toes. You know, it keeps keeps you like growing. I think whenever you're stagnant, that's when you stop growing as a human being so change not too much change is great too much change is just hectic but then change whenever you're feeling too comfortable i think is, is really good yeah. yeah and you've done a lot of changes to yourself mm. right now it's changed time to affect the outside change change that i'm choosing myself yeah and it's not because of uh you know, the surrounding opportunities but it's something that I actually have to grasp, go out and grasp for it myself. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to, but I have to. It's yeah. scary. It's 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 easier to stay calm. Yeah, but it is. You'll do it. But I mean, I've done it before, and you know, I, who have I been to be the person to be scared of change? It's never scared me before, and it shouldn't now. But yeah. what about the restaurant? And they can keep ticking. Do you think? I mean, uh, it they have it has to, yeah. you know. As with everything in life, you know, everything you know, keeps on going. Yeah. There we go. Sage words of advice from a woman <laughs> who knows herself. <laughs> no, but but thank you. I would like to thank you so much for your friendship and uh, your kindness and everything. Oh, and you. and and to all my my other friends, Jonas, you know, James. Po, you know, and Ning, you know, like you know who you are, right? And and thank you so much for all the love and the support because it's it's made me learn to love myself in the right way, and uh, I couldn't have done it without you guys. Yeah. Oh, I'm and thank you to everyone else out there too that has been such a great, great like part of my life like John and Mitchell you know, and everyone it's just like great yeah, people chapter I really really can't and the album so but between now and two months time when the album drops Huan Sun can we not yes. single not album <laughs> so from now until the new single uh -huh. is released in two months um, it's Huan Sun Tari S-O-O-N T A R E E. It's on the river. Look it up, and you can hear this songbird and Mama songbird singing and cooking and chatting, and it's all very, very pleasant and yes. delicious Northern Thai food. And and, mm. ooh, ooh, and I'm going to your first concert. I've never. Oh, oh yeah. On um, the 25th to Bangkok. Yes. What about that. Oh, that's really exciting for me yeah. too. Oh, I love it. Uh, well. I haven't been on a big concert like that for four years already because of COVID. And, and before that, it was, around, I think, around two years. And so it's it's just so exciting in, in a good way. It's, yeah, it's a huge... Like how? It's, uh, I don't know how many tickets, but uh, it's like a huge haul. Thousands, yeah, thousands, yeah. Thousands and thousands. Yeah. And um, I'm <laughs> only a three and a half thousand baht ticket left, so nothing cheap for me. I'll have to like, you know, sneak her in. <laughs> <laughs> it's really tiny, you can hide your handbag. Um, yeah, so on the 25th, I'll be going to Bangkok and we'll be like throwing garlands at yeah. you and being fabulous. So Cassette festival. Yeah. Too, I know she's not on social media much, but you can follow her. Go on Nana yes. Cummings and you yes. on Facebook. And, yes. Yeah. Um, on YouTube, Facebook, YouTube. yeah. You listen to her songs. It's so yeah. you can see her riding a stallion. It's very <laughs> sexy. So, Lana, I think it's time. You haven't even touched your drink. Oh. Mine. So, cheers, my love. Cheers. And thank you so much for coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Thank you. ขอบคุณเจ้า